God. Let the weight of your glory be in this place. Let the weight of your glory be in this place. The weight of your glory be in this place. We bless you. We bless you at all Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We magnify you. Reveal yourself to us, Daddy God. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself to us, Daddy God. Reveal yourself, Daddy God. Stretch us beyond our imagination. Let us conceive you this morning, Lord God. Let us receive you this morning. Birth something new in us, Daddy God. Refresh us, O Lord, my God. Refresh us, refresh us, refresh us, refresh us, my God. Relegate our body temperatures and relegate our thoughts, Lord God, and let us be in the mind of Christ, Lord God, and let us just receive the weight of your glory, my God. We thank you, Lord God. We trust you, Lord God. My God, my God, you are the deliverer. You are the deliverer, my God. We thank you, Lord God. We bless you. We magnify you. We glorify you, Lord God. We glorify you. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you that the angels are encamped around us. We thank you, Father God, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. My God, I thank you. My God, I bless you. My God, I praise you. My God, you're... I sense your peace, Lord God. I sense your grace. I sense your mercy, Lord God. Speak to us. Speak to us. Speak to us. Holy Spirit, have your way, my God. My God. Will you just lift your hands up and receive God's glory? Like receive. Just receive his glory. Lord God, we thank you and receive your glory. We receive your glory. We receive your glory, Lord God. We want to experience you, Father God, like never before. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My God, an encounter, Lord God. We desire more of you, Lord God. We desire more of you. We desire more of you and less of us, oh Lord. More of you and less of us, Lord God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Rose of Sharon. Thank you, thank you, thank you, great I am. Thank you, thank you. Prince of peace, thank you, Lord God. My God, we receive the weight of your glory. My God, thank you, 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 thank you. We receive you, Lord God. We receive you, Lord God. We receive you. We receive you. We receive you. My God, we receive you, Lord God. We receive you, Father. We receive you, Lord God. My God. What a mighty God we serve. We thank you. 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 We bless you. We praise you. We magnify you. We glorify 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 you. We extol you, Lord. We extol you, Lord. We extol you, Lord. My God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. We thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We magnify you, O Lord. We magnify you. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Let us manifest your glory. Let us feel the weight of your glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, 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 thank you. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My God, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that justice is being served. My God, that justice is being served and that you stand in favor of the righteousness. My God, we thank you for your favor. We thank you for righteousness. We thank you, Father God, for your justice in this earth, Lord God. For you said if you be lifted up, that you would draw all men unto you, Lord God. So we lift up the name of Jesus. We lift up the name of Jesus. Do me a favor. If you haven't shared the devotional, will you just go share it? Will you put it on your timeline? Would you invite somebody in? If you're a little bit later, will you copy the YouTube link and send it? If you have not shared it, would you just do me a favor and share it? There's someone that needs to see it. It's someone that needs to experience this devotional this morning. We thank you, Father God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We bind up the strong man, every satanic attack. We thank you, Father God, for rebuking the devourer for our sakes. My God, we thank you, Father God that we lack absolutely nothing. Father God, we receive from you our daily portion and our daily bread. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God. Daddy, we need to encounter you. My God, we need to encounter you more than like ever, Lord God. Reveal yourself to us. Reveal yourself strong in our lives, Father God. Our desire is to do your will. My God, Replace our heart. Put your heart in us, creating us a clean heart, Lord God. Renew a steadfast spirit in us. Do not remove yourself from us, Lord God. My God, we desire to experience you in all new ways. Jesus, give us your holiness. Give us your holiness, Lord God. With outstretched hands, we worship you, Lord God. My God, we thank you, Lord God. We receive you, Father God. We receive you, Father God. We receive you, Lord God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. My God, we thank you. My God, we bless you. My God, we praise you. My God, we glorify you. My God, my God, strengthen us, Lord God. Quicken us, Holy Spirit. We yield to you. Holy Spirit, have your way. My God, be our teacher, be our advocator, be our spirit of truth, Lord God. We thirst for you, Lord God, like the deer pants after the water. Father, we need more of you. We need more of you. We need more of you. We need more of you, Lord. We need more of you. My God, we will be anxious for absolutely nothing. Everything in prayer and supplication. Father, we lay our all before the altar, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you. We drive out every stronghold, every principality, everything in the name of Jesus, every force of darkness, everything that stands in the way, Lord God. Let nothing stand in the way. My God, let nothing stand. My God, we drive out every sickness, all manner of disease. My God, high blood pressure, you must go right now in Jesus name. Quicken us to your spirit. Quicken us, Father God, to your healing balm, Lord God. We stretch ourselves before you, Lord God. We receive your justice by faith. We thank you, Father God, that you redeem the righteous, that you redeem time, that we don't have to make up for lost time. My God, I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that the warfare is great, but he will avenge us. The warfare is great, but he will avenge us. And he gave me Romans 12, 17 recompense to no evil for evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men. And I'm vengeance is mine. I'm going to avenge you. I'm going to justify you. I'm going to stand up for righteousness and Jesus, my God, Jesus, 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 Jesus. My God, we plead the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the standard of the blood rest on this devotional and the standard of the blood rest in our house. We thank you that the blood is the standard for he was bruised for our iniquities, chastised for our peace. My God, he took it all upon him, Lord God. He took it all upon him, Lord God. He took it all upon him, Lord God. He carried our weaknesses. He carried our sorrow, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. He was bruised for our 
bruised for our rebellion, crushed for our sins, Lord God. He was beaten so we could be made whole, Lord God. We lack nothing in Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over this earth, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus over this earth, Lord God. We thank you for revival, Lord God. We thank you you are redeeming the time, Lord God. We thank you not a soul will not be saved. We drive out every force of darkness, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Souls are coming into the kingdom. We plead the blood of Jesus over our neighbors. We plead the blood of Jesus over our street. We plead the blood of Jesus over our homes. We plead the blood of Jesus over our schools. We plead the blood of Jesus over our family members. My God, we thank you that the blood is the standard. We plead the blood of Jesus over our minds. We plead the blood of Jesus, Lord God, over the White House, over President Trump, over the senators, Father God, over those that identify themselves as Republicans and Democrats and over the Supreme Court justice. My God, we thank you for righteous legislation, Father God. We repent for this nation, Lord God. We repent, Father God, for giving over to signing off on laws, to being a part of a legal system, Father God, for endorsing laws that do not support you, unrighteous le legislation that comes against your kingdom, Lord God, that comes against your kingdom, Lord God. My God, we repent, Father God, for those laws, Father God, we repent for racial discrimination, we repent, Lord God, for unjustice laws, for systematic things that do not line up with your words, P people that we voted into office, Lord God, they Things that we signed off on that go against your kingdom, Father. We repent as a nation, Lord God. We repent as a nation for celebrating things that you would not have us celebrate, Lord God. We repent for giving over to a reprobate mind, Father God, for laws and things that are not just. Laws and things that do not align with your kingdom, Father God. Abortion and things, other things that do not go, that go against righteousness, Lord God. We repent, Daddy God. My God, we repent, Father God, right now in Jesus' name for unrighteous legislation and for agreeing to those things, Lord God. Quicken us in your spirit, Lord God, for signing off on things that support sexual immorality, for the FC. Father God, for things in the airways and television shows and agreeing with those shows and watching things that do not bring you glory. We close the door to the enemy. We close access to the door of the enemy. My God, in the name of Jesus, my God, we drive out every force, Father God, for aligning our souls and our spirit with pornography and homosexuality and anything that is not aligned with you, sexual morality, lewdness, crudeness, my God, whatever it is, Lord God, that we've aligned our souls with whatever we participated in, whatever we said was okay, Father God. We come out of agreement with those, Lord God. Right now, every unrighteous legislation, Father God. My God, in the name of Jesus, we drive out for every force of darkness, Lord God. Reveal yourself to us, Lord God. Do not let us be deceived, Father God. Do not let us be wise in our own eyes, Lord God. Do not let us be consumed, Father God, by color, Lord God. Do not not, Lord God, do not, do not, do not bring your end time judgment into this earth, Lord God. My God, raise up righteous leaders, Father God, and those that will speak for kingdom. Let us put our trust and our hope in you, Lord God. For this is the end of the time, Father God. These are the end times, Lord God. So sow yourself strong. Let us become big and bold in all things in you, my God. Let Christ reign in our heart. Let Christ reign in our homes. Let Christ reign in our lives. We thank you, Lord. We set ourselves, we set our affection on you. We thank you, Lord. We set ourselves in our affection affection on you. We set our affection on you, Lord God. Open the eyes of our understanding to the hope and call of who you called us to be in Christ Jesus. My God, we call forth righteous legislation that honors you, that honors you, that is not twisted, Lord God. My God, that is not twisted, Lord God. Let us not twist them, twist, Lord God. Let us not be caught up in things that are twisted, Lord God. My God, let us not sign off on things that are twisted. Give your 
your people eyes to see. Give your servants discerning spirits, O Lord. Give us discerning spirits, O Lord. Give us discerning spirits. Let us discern, Lord God, what is of you and what is not of you. Let us not be moved emotionally, Lord God. Let us possess our souls, Lord God. Let us so that we can heal our land, so we can pray your will into this earth, Lord God. Your kingdom come. Your will be done throughout the land. Uproot unrighteous legislation in Jesus name. My God, let us preach the gospel throughout the earth. Let your holiness, let us be victorious, Lord God. Let us receive recompense, Lord God. Let us stand for truth. Guide us, O Lord. My God, let us not be immorally bound, Father God, to things that are untruth. My God, we have been deceived long enough, Lord God. We drive out the spirit of deception right now in Jesus name. We drive out the spirit of sexual immorality in Jesus name. We drive out the spirit of lust in Jesus name. My God, we drive out the spirit of homosexuality in Jesus name. We thank you, Father God, for your love for us. We thank you that you receive us. We thank you, Father God, for your justice. We thank you, Father God, for your truth, Lord God. We drive out ungodly thoughts and motives, Lord God. My God, we repent, Father God, for giving over to the lust of money, Lord God. We repent, Father God. We drive out drug abuse and drug addiction right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father God, for holiness. We thank you 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 for holiness. My God, we thank you. Every force of darkness, every spirit that's been sitting at the table, every, the spirit of anger, Father God, the spirit of wrath, Father God, the spirit of destruction, Lord God, that's been coming in to our neighborhoods, the spirit of segregation, Lord God, the spirit of race. And we drive out every force right now in Jesus name. Father God, we plead the blood of Jesus over our neighborhoods and our minds and our homes. We separate ourselves, Lord God. We sanctify yourself to be father God, to be used for your glory. Ah, but Father, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. It is um it is very hard to um it is very hard to heal what we are a part of. It is very hard to do deal with what we need to deal with when we um when we sign off on it, when we are, um, when we are a part of it, right? When we are a part of it, when we sign off on it, when we commit to it, when it's a part of our lives and who we are, it is very difficult when we sign off on things, um, for us to help heal those things. And so we have to make a decision to repent for the things that we've participated in, right? When we sign off on unrighteous legislation, when um, we vote things into office that do not honor God, we are here to represent kingdom. And it's so hard to heal what we're a part of. And so in our ignorance, because a lot of us do things in ignorance, it's not because we want to do those things is because we don't know no better. And when we don't know better, right, then what we have to turn around and do is position ourselves. We have to turn around and position ourselves to repent for those things. We Lord, forgive me for being in a position where I came into any agreement because most of us take a lot of the wisdom from what people tell us and we don't spend time seeking the face of God, asking God, am I supposed to be a part of this? Like, are you asking me to really be a part of us? And I read a scripture in Luke that tells us to possess our souls. Most of us don't really possess our souls, which means we don't master or contain or hold on to our emotions. We allow our emotions to be the force that drives us many times. We allow our experiences to be the the thing that drives us many times. And because our experiences and our emotions become the driving force behind the decisions we make, we will sign off on things that do not honor God. 
that have that do not honor God and we we label them as being the good thing or the the right thing to do and it's like no like no what does God say about this situation what does the word say about this situation? And when we teeter totter, it puts us in the position of still being lukewarm. God didn't put us here to just be good Christians. God put us here to advance his kingdom. That's why we're here. We're here for kingdom advancement. We're here so that the glory of God reigns throughout the earth. Every person on this earth, every person that has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we have an assignment on this earth. We're only here temporary, right? This is not my home. I'm not a part. I am here on kingdom assignment. So when God gives me a kingdom assignment, right, there's an agenda, a kingdom agenda associated with his kingdom assignment, right? And he's saying to me, this is what I've signed you to do. This is your amount of influence. This is where I'm calling you to be in position. And his desire is for us to get in position. Well, really what, what usually happens is when we are born, we are tainted by culture. We are tainted by family experiences. We are tainted by our own experiences and the adversary very early, the adversaries very, very early, right? The adversaries very, very, very early taint and pollute us with things that are not kingdom. This is why once we accept Jesus Christ, Romans 12 and two becomes a, a moral obligation for us to begin to renew our mind in the word. And the enemy loves to have us caught up in so many things emotionally, where we're all over the place, where we won't stand for justice, where we get into, we get into the status quo, right? Where we begin to act like the status, we're status quo, we're acting just like everybody else. When God said you are to be in this world, but not of this world, right? Where you're not to be, you're not to be of this world, in this world, but not of this world. But because most of us just have done church for so long, and we've just been in church and we've done good deeds. We do, we've done good deeds, like good deeds. And we thought doing good deeds was all that God was requiring of us. And God is saying to us, I equipped you and made you for way greater than that. And I sent you as a change agent in this earth, right? Sent, sent you as a change agent in this earth. And what I need you to do is to become a change agent in this earth. And I need you to stand for righteousness and I need you to stand for justice. And before you sign off on something or before you become a, a part of something, I need you to possess your soul. I need you to master your emotions. I need you to get in position. I need you to ask me what's your part. What's my part in this? I don't need you to just be enraged because people tell you to be enraged. I need you to be enraged because the Lord has dealt with you and said, this is not right. And this is what I need you to turn over. And then what you do, what you do is you'll, it'll rise up in you. Like it'll rise up in you at the appointed time. And you will be like the Jesus was in the temples right? Tearing up the tables, right? Of that, which was unrighteous. He'll give you the strategies to deal with that, which is unrighteous in the area that you're called to because you've been equipped in that area, right? Cause he, all, you've been equipped. Your assignment is to deal with the unrighteousness in that area. And so we cannot be wise. So we have to start everything with a repent daily. You should be repenting. My God, daily, you should be humbling yourself. God loves a broken and contrite spirit. Somebody that'll come before him and say, you know what? I don't know it all. I don't know it all. God, I don't, I don't know it all. I don't have it all. I'm, I'm sorry, Lord God. There are some things that I've fallen into that do not line up with your word. And because I didn't have revelation, I need you to, you need to, I need you to forgive me. I need you to forgive me for sins knowingly and knowing unknowingly. I need you to search the deep places in my heart and show me the things that I've signed off on that do not line up with your will and forgive me, Lord, right? And creating me a new heart and allow me to start seeing things 
from your, your seat, from the way you see things. Let me see through your eyes. Let me not be wise in all my own eyes. Let me shun the very presence of evil, right? Because those things will have you twisting the word of truth. Twist it. Tw twisting. Twisting the word of truth. And you'll be taking a part of the scripture and you'll only be receiving parts of the scripture as your truth. Instead of receiving all the parts of the scripture, you'll only receive what you're comfortable with. So go ask God, search your heart, go ask God, give me your thoughts on unrighteous legislation. Give me your thoughts on abortion. Give me your thoughts on all of these things that are being voted. Show me the things that you do. Give me your thoughts on these. Show me this in your word, back it up in your word, because people will start to tell you, um, People will start to tell you that these things are not going on or these things are not. And so you've got to make sure that you see through his eyes and not your own eyes. And if you begin to see through your eyes, his eyes and not your own eyes, nobody can brainwash you. Nobody can brainwash you. No, nobody. No, like absolutely nobody can brainwash you because you will stand in the truth of what the word says, my God, and nothing else, right? You will not be deceived and you won't be wise in your own eyes. You, that's why you got to renew your mind. That's why you got to conform. Yep. You got to eat it up. You got to stand in it. You got to meditate on this laws day and night so that you won't be misconstrued, misconstrued by something someone's tell you, because remember this wide is the path. Wide, wide, wide is the path. And God has shown me multiple times, you people, people, church people on that path, people who have accepted Jesus Christ on that path. My road is very narrow. I shared a sip Sunday about one of my friend's dreams and the narrow path. My road is very narrow. You almost got to walk one foot in front of the other on my road. And it's not that you can't do it, but how you do it is through grace. And the help of the Holy Spirit. That's why he sent the comforter to come. So the comforter will teach you. So let me give you some spiritual truths. We are on third day of our consecration. If you are new to the devotional, you can go back and see the other two days um, on the YouTube channel, on the Facebook page. Um, if you're on Instagram, you can go back. It's here. It's in my story. You can go back and watch those three, those last three days. And this is not a religious, this is not a religious thing. It's not a religious thing. This ain't point system. This is your relationship with God that's peeled back in layers and built up over time. I don't, I don't want to get you into doing God. I want you to understand that this is about your relationship. And the more that your eyes are open, you'll begin to re receive and see what God is saying. So let me give you a, this part of our truth. I told you every morning, right? Part of the consecration is that we are asking God to reveal to something to us. And the last three mornings in the same spot at the same time, God speaks something to me, right? The first thing was you lack nothing, right? And he gave me the scripture to back it up. The second, the second thing, thing was I supply all your needs. Like your needs are already met every day before you get up, before you get up every day. The third thing that he told me to take comfort in is today. He said, you and baby, you in the safest place ever. Like in your, your re relationship with me, being with me, choosing me, choosing to be on the narrow path. You are in the safest place ever. And I asked him, I said, Lord, I need you to back this up in your word. Show me how I'm in the safe. He said, you're in the safest. Lakeisha, you are in the safe. Ain't nothing out there going to protect you more than being in this place that you're in right now. Safest place. You are in the safest place ever. And I said, I need you to give me the scripture. And he took me to what David wrote. And he said, Psalms 91. You who sit down in the, the in high in the high God's presence, spend the night in should I shadow say this, God, you're my refuge. I trust in you and I'm safe. That's right. He rescues you from hidden traps. He shields you from deadly hazards. His huge outstretched arms protect you under them. You're perfectly safe. 
his arms fend off all harm. Fear nothing, not wild wolves in the night, not flying arrows in the day, not disease that prowls through the darkness, not disaster that erupts at high noon. Even though others succumb all around, drop like flies right and left, no harm will even graze you. You'll stand untouched. Watch it all from a distance. Watch the wicked turn into corpses. Yes, because God is your refuge. The high God, your very own home. Evil cannot get close to you. Harm cannot get through the door. He ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. My God, if you stumble, they'll catch you. Their job is to keep you from falling. You'll walk unharmed among lions and snakes. My God, thank you, thank you. And kick young lions and serpents from the path. If you hold on to me for dear life, this is the message Bible. This is when you make the decision, right? This is the message Bible. If you will hold on to me for dear life, if you hold on to me, if you make a decision to hold on, when you make the decision to hold on to him for dear life, you are in the safest place ever. Do not let, do not make the enemy, right? Do not make, do not let the enemy make you think you're not in a safe place. You are in the safest place ever. You are in the safe, like the safest place ever ever the safest place ever and the enemy will try to make you think you're not in a safe place but you're in the safest place ever because you're coming out of the normal you're coming out of the normal you're no longer doing what's norm and when we do that there's a shakening it, it gets shaken it seems shakening right seems like you're shaking because everybody around you is like wait what's wrong with you why are you so different why are you acting like this um, that you ain't got to be overzealous like that when the scripture tells us we need the zeal of the Lord, right? You, ain't, you just need knowledge and wisdom to go with it. You ain't got to be overzealous like that. You ain't got to be so focused like that. You ain't got to love the Lord your God with all your heart. God don't expect you to be perfect, right? God don't expect you to be perfect. He doesn't expect you to be perfect, right? He doesn't, he doesn't expect you to be perfect, but you're in the same, same place. He said, if you'll hold on to me for dear life, says God, I'll get you out of any trouble. I'll give you the best of care. If you only get to know and trust me, call me and I'll answer. Be at your side in bad times, even when I'm in bad times. Come on now. Even when I'm in bad times, he said, I'm going to rescue you. Then I'm going to throw you a party. He said, I'm going to throw you a party because you make a decision to hold on to me for dear life. You make a decision to hold on me. You make a decision. I'll give you a long life and I'll give you a long drink of salvation. God, God, show, God showed me something. He said, when you hold on to me for dear life, like like my, I'm a daddy's girl. Like I love my dad. I love my mom intensely, but I love my dad. And when I see my dad, I'm at 40, I'm, I'm, I'll be 47 this year. I hold like I big girl, big, big grown woman. When I get into my dad's arms, I just bury my head in him. When my husband was living, I used to do the same. I'm just going to bear. I'm just going li- to lose myself in you. Right. And so I just bury myself in my dad's arms. God showed me, he said, when you hold on to me and you just bury yourself in my arms, he said, you don't even know the danger that's around you. You don't even know the things that's happening around you. You're not oblivious. And the reason is because you've just buried yourself in me. You just lost yourself in me. You trust me to lead you. You trust me to guide you. You don't even have to see what's going on around you. That's how much you trust me. So when you lose yourself in me, That's how much you trust, trust me. You just bury yourself in me, Lakeisha. And so when I bury myself in him, I'm in the safest place ever. I'm in the safest place ever. And I know, I, I know like a little girl, like a little boy, come on now. I'm in the safest, I'm in the safest place ever. When we bury ourselves in God, we're in the safest place. We ain't no recoil. Ain't no, ain't nothing 
coming up against us. It's no, it's none of that. It's none of that. And the reason that it's none of that is because we are in the safest and that's where God wants to lose us to lose ourselves. And all the things that has been pulling on you have been the things that have been trying to keep you from losing yourself. So let me give, I gave you that. Let me give you our scripture that we're meditating on three day three, right? And today we are out with the old and in with the new. <laughs> we are out we are out, we are out with the old and the in with the new. And I pray that God imparts, we already prayed and asked God to create in us a clean heart. We already asked God, God created in us a clean heart. We already gave daddy permission to search the deep things of our heart, right? Lord, search the deep things of our heart because we're getting a clean heart. We've recognized we need a brand new heart. We've asked God to put his spirit in us. We've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Hopefully you have. If not, you're going to get a chance, right? Um, we accept. We accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. God, after we ask God, after we pray, creating us a clean heart, renew a steadfast spirit. God gave us Ezekiel 36 and 26. And he said to us, I'm going to give you a new heart and I'm going to put a new spirit in you. And I'm going to remove your heart of stone. And I'm going to give you a heart of flesh, right? He gave it to us. He gave us, we read all of Ezekiel 36. If you didn't read Ezekiel 36, go back and read Ezekiel 36. Now we're at the place of the ex exchange. This is when you're going to have to relinquish some more control. I hear you, Holy Spirit. So we're going over to Matthew 9 and 17, right? We're going to have to relinquish some, some old control, but this is what I need you to know. There's nothing wrong with your old wine skins in that season. Right. So stop questioning when God is pulling you into a place saying to you, um, I need you to do some new things. Like I need you to do st some new things. Stop questioning what go stop. Well, what it used to, uh, it used to work. It used to, I used to be, all of that is over. He's giving you a brand new heart. You're going to have to have a brand new thing in this thing. You're going to have to have some. So it's not that the old wine skin skins. It's not that the old ways that you operated in were not significant. They're just not going to be significant in this season. That the old way you carried yourself is not going to be significant in this season. If God is advancing you, if God is telling you to level you up, if God is bringing you into a new place, your old thought processes, the way that you handled yourself, your old study habits, some of your your old friends, right? Like that's not going to be able to be with you in this new season. If you're going to receive the new heart, your old justifications of this is just how I am. And it's not that the old wine skins weren't relevant. It's not that scripture never says that the old wine skins were not relevant. You got to read that differently. Matthew nine and 17, it says, um, this is where I'm going. It says, nor do they put in new wine in old skins or else the wine skins would break. The wine is spilled and the wine skins are ruined, but they put new wine into new wine skins. And then both are pre pre preserved, right? The, 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 the both are preserved. So what you learned in that season, come on, Holy Ghost was preserved. It was preserved for that season. It's a marker. Remember I told you many of us have been dealing with generational complacency, right? It was a marker. What we did in that season, what we did in that timing, what we did in that. It's not that it's not significant. I hear you, Holy Spirit. It's not that it wasn't not important. It's not right, but it's not for this season. And I've got to begin to recognize since God has put a new heart in me, my abrasiveness, my brashness, right? My brashness, my overwhelmingly um, capacity to always think that I'm right. My overwhelmingly passing my capacity to always assume that everything I do is justifiable. My overwhelmingly capacity to discern my own ways and not let the spirit of the Lord discern things for me are not going to work for me in this season, right? He's created me a new heart, right? And so they put the new wine into the new wine skins of both reserve. It's not that 
It's just that the old wine, wine skins are just a, per, 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 a point of reference, right? And so we need to build an altar to the old new wine skins. Like every time they accomplish or they met God in a specific place, that's fine. We build the altar. We recognize you for what you did in this season. We praise you. Deuteronomy 6 and 8, read those when you get time. We're going to remember what you did in this season, but I'm coming out. I'm coming into the new land. The priest has gone before me. The Ark of the Covenant has gone before me. And I need new wine. I need the new wine to go into a new wine scan. Right. So, so I'm, that's the new wine to new wine skins. So the spirit is regenerating, right? We are getting, re the spirit is renewing us. We are made into new creatures in Christ. We have new hearts. We have new spirits. We have new principles of light. Come on, Holy spirit. We have new ways to love. We have new levels of faith. We have new levels of holiness, right? We are, we are, those things we have new eyes to see with already when you prayed that prayer and some of you are like, I don't feel the new receive it by faith, receive it, receive it by faith, receive that by faith, accept what I'm saying to you by faith. The moment believe you receive when you pray the moment that I prayed and asked God to create in me a new art, this prayer this week in consecration, the moment that I prayed and asked God to do it right. He give, he's giving me new hands to work with, <laughs> new ways to handle things, a new life and a brand new conversation, like a new life and a brand new conversation. And he's going to shed abroad those things in our heart. He's going to shed abroad in th those things in our heart. Remember, remember our three principles. If you don't know the three principles that we're working through, everyone is given a kingdom assignment. No assignment is less important than any other. Your assignment has to have a kingdom agenda. God called you into the assignment, not we ourselves, right? <laughs> and we talked about Moses and we have to renew our mind, Romans 12 and two. And so we already prayed for those things and God is saying, good. Now, this means in this season, at no time am I going to be able to walk wise in my own eyes. And it's so good that you were effective. Right. It's so good that you were effective. I had, I told you I was at my mirror. There are scriptures all over my mirror and one particular scripture stood out and it said, go out into all the world and preach the gospel. And when I looked at that scripture, revelation came to me and said, you ain't, you ain't touched all you have. It. You're just in the beginning of this full time ministry, three years, three and a half years. You're just like you're just in the beginning of this. You haven't seen anything yet. You haven't gone through all throughout the world, Lakeisha. And you know, that's what God said. You have. And so in this next, we can use phase next part of your assignment. There's a, can I speak to my sisters for a second? Cause I hear the Holy spirit for my sisters that have become hardened in their heart because of things that have happened in broken hearts. You're going to have to have a new tenderness and softness in you. You're not going to be able to pop off. And I ain't using sisters like skin. I'm talking about my women folks. You're not going to be able to pop off. You're going to have to let the gentleness of the Lord overtake you. You don't have to defend yourself in this season. You don't have to be brash. You don't have to be vicious. You don't have to, you, you don't have to do all that, right? You got to let God work out the desires of your heart. You don't have to rage at the table. You ain't, you ain't got to tell them like it is. You ain't got to assert yourself. You, you don't, you don't have to do that in this season. There's a gentleness that's coming to you. There's a freshness that's coming to you. You can let your guard down. You can be the feminine soft side of God. You can let God restore love in your heart. My God, you can let God restore love in your heart. You get to be soft. You get to be gentle. You get to be loving. You get to be kind. You get to be the grace of God in this earth. You get to be the mercy of God in this earth. Ask the Lord to restore your nurturing spirit. Lord, restore my nurturing spirit. Restore my loving spirit. Restore my kind spirit. Restore my gentle spirit. This hardness was never for you. Right. And then for my fellows, the compassion, my God, we thank you for the compassion of God. We thank you for the compassion at the gentleness, the kindness, 
Gentleness has to be in this season. That's part of our new wine. That's part of the new grace. That's part of what we want. He's removed all the old from us. All the old, all the old from us. We don't have to be hard anymore. We get to be nurturing. We get to be loving. We get to be kind. Why? Because we are in the safest place ever. And then our men of God get to be compassionate for their families, compassionate for their communities. God did not just assign them to be workhorses. They not just providers to us. They're they're the spiritual leaders and head of our homes. And we're calling them back in place. We're calling fathers back into place and we're calling women into their spiritual places in Jesus name. Amen. And we thank you, Lord God, that you are restoring order in our homes. You are restoring order. Our men are more compassionate. Our men have loving, you are raising up fathers amongst us. You're restoring family, the device and the attack of the enemy enemy is not. And then, then we, and as women become examples of the grace of God on this earth, right? We become examples of the grace of God on this earth because that is God's will for us. My God, that is God's will for us. That is his desire. So our families can be united. So our communities can be in strong I come in and the men are in place and the women are in place. And when the men are in place and the women are in place, guess what's going to happen? Guess what's going to play happen, right? Guess what's going to happen? Our communities are going to be able to heal and the forces of darkness are going to be driven out because everybody is going to be in place. So we declare and decree, Lord God, today you are restoring us. We thank you for new wine skins. We thank you for new ways of thinking. We thank you for restoring and regenerating the brain cells, Father God, in our mind. We thank you, Father God, for the softening, the tender side of us. We thank you for your peace, my God. We thank you, Father God, that for your grace, my God. We thank you, Lord God, that we are anchored in your truth and nothing else, my God. We repent for receiving anything but godly order for our life. My God, we thank you. There's a softness. If you receive that women of God, there will be a softness and a tender and a compassion. We are grace. We are supposed to be the feminine side of God on this earth. We are called to be nurturers and people will lie and tell you, but God made man and woman and he made each in his image men to be warriors, men to be hunters, men to be spiritual heads and women to be love and to grace and nurturing, right? And the kind and the soft and the tender side of God. And we can do that and we can be in our rightful places and God will honor that. He's doing, he's doing a new thing. Ask him to reveal the new thing, right? New hands, new walk, new feet, new conversation, all of those things. My God, that, and let God do it, but you don't do it. God is going to do it in you. That's it. That's all I have for you today. Anybody need Jesus? Anybody need Jesus? We all need Jesus. So I want you to do me a favor, right? Whether you've accepted Jesus Christ or not, let's take this covenant prayer because that's what it is. Let's take this covenant prayer. Let's stand in this prayer in what the Lord is saying to us. And let's stand in this prayer. Let's be bold in praying, Father God, this prayer today. Dear Jesus, Lord, I'm in need of a savior. I've sinned against you. I'm sorry for my sins. I'm asking you to come in my heart and take away my sins. And I'm promising to love and follow you as best as I can. Holy Spirit, I need your help in Jesus name. Amen. And God is that faithful. He's going to answer that prayer. He is that faithful that he is going to. You cannot pray that prayer and God not answer. He is that faithful. He is going to answer. He's that prayer that you pray right now. He is going to answer that prayer. You need to receive it by faith, right? Joe, John 6 and 30 says, As him that cometh unto me, I will no wise cast out. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you want to know how to connect to the ministry, go to the website. LakeishaMJohnson.com. Subscribe to the written daily devotional. We have an amazing team of writers that are anointed to, to write for God, right? Go subscribe so you can get the written devotional. 
consider a partnership with the ministry. Go onto the website and you can find out if God is speaking to your heart to sow or to give or to partner with the ministry. Consider to becoming a partner of the ministry. We love you so, like we love you so much. We love you so much. I love that, Christina Beasley. Never underestimate what God, I'm receiving this gentleness from my own. I am a representation of God's grace. Now, I need you to do me a favor. I want you to go be loved today, right? You received your, your word from the Lord for today, right? New wine, new wine. Thank you, Selena Johnson. I received that blessing. Happy birthday to you, woman of God. Um, all of the rest of you, I love you so much. God loves you so much more, but I need you to do me a favor. I need you to go be loved today. Let someone else, so so a cup of coffee into someone today right? Just some random person. Do something for someone today. Let somebody know, man, I love you, right? Tell somebody here, I'm thinking of you today. Someone need, someone needs to experience God through you in Jesus name. Amen. I'll, I'll have a testimony for that in a moment. I, I'll have a testimony, Tammy. I love y'all so much. I love y'all. See you back in the morning, 5 a.m. Love, peace, and blessings.